Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hashtag Truth. Tonight, we have the one, the only, Tristan Williams. Before I get to you, Tristan, let me give a couple of shout-outs real quick. Um, Number one, Hashtag Truth on YouTube. All of these videos, all of these interviews will be on my page for 24 hours, and then they shoot over to my YouTube page, where they will be there forever and ever and ever till they shut down YouTube. So go over there, subscribe, hit the button, hit the bell for all notifications. That way you can watch Tristan Williams over and over and over again. I'm pretty sure you will do that. Tristan, how are you doing, sir? I'm fantastic, Scott. How are you today? I am doing awesome, man. You know the big reason why we're here. We need to know what happened after you and your brother lost the tag team titles at EWF. What happened, man? Well, um, you know, Aston seemed to have been a little frustrated all night with it. Um, we had some issues uh, on the drive down. I don't know. Things have just have been weird. And then, uh, you know, I've been living in his shadow for a number of years, and I kind of thought I could handle myself out there. Um, I didn't need him. You know, a lot of people think that I need him to wrestle. Um, so, uh I tried to take things into my own hands, and it didn't work out. And uh, clearly, those frustrations we've been having has built up. And he did what he did. Man, that had to be heartbreaking. He uh, he was on the show here with me, and he said he uh, he whispered something like "I love you" in your ear. Next thing you know, you were getting a beat down, man. I was I was front and center. I was first row right there at EWF when it happened, and my heart sank, brother, because CLB has always been. My one of my fa- family's favorite tag teams, so we were really heartbroken to see that. What is what is going to happen in the future for Tristan Williams now? I mean, I know you want to get a hold of your brother, but other than that, what's what's in the future for Tristan Williams? Uh, well, obviously, getting my hands on Aston is at the forefront of everything that I do. But um, going forward, my goal is just kind of showing people who I am, um, who who Tristan Williams really is instead of just the guy in the corner with Aston, you know, and that's a big deal to me. No doubt about it. So tell us, man, tell us, where did Tristan Williams start off in wrestling, man? What is your story? Man, all right. So this journey goes back years. Um, I first started getting into wrestling in Colorado. Um, You know, we – we started out, you know, we'd see a bunch of local shows. Aston's been doing this since the early 90s. Of course, you know, we grew up watching wrestling, and I always wanted to do it. And, uh, you know, I'm obviously the smaller of the two of us, and he was always hesitant about letting me get in the ring. And, um, you know, I had a big growth spurt in my later years, uh, so to speak. Uh, and so finally uh, he was like, all right, let's go see this show. I got a guy in Colorado that I know. Um, so we went out and checked it out. It's called, uh, the, the promotion was called ACW asylum championship wrestling, uh, right. ran by a gentleman named Brandon Bishop. Uh, and so we went out there and watched the show and got with him and, uh, he offered to help train me. Um, he ran a, he had a little, he had a gym with a ring. And so I spent many, uh, many a months and years inside that gym, uh, training to perfect who I am alongside Aston. Um, so I think that was, when did we start that? I think it was 2009. Hey, what's going on, Ben Wright? Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, yeah, so 2009 is when I started really training for all of this. Um, and then in 2012, we moved over here to South Carolina, um, started working for a lot of smaller promotions in the area before we got the call for EWF. Um, we're kind of glad we did. Oh, yeah, man. It was awesome. I was there the night you won the tag team championships. It was like you came out of nowhere, like you fell from the sky, and then you won the championships. Everybody was elated. You defended them a couple of times, and then all of a sudden it just, I mean, fell apart wouldn't even be, would be a total understatement. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like an empire was, was crumbled, uh, turned to ash or dirt. Um, I mean, my daughter yeah. has a, my daughter has an autographed picture with both of you, um, 
the first time you guys ever came out at EWF, Tristan threw his bandana and my daughter caught it and she's got that. And she almost cried in it that night when she came home. She's like, why, Daddy, why? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, there's still a lot of answers I need, too. Um, you know, he, he told me he loved me, and then next thing I know, I was I was waking up on the mat, uh, and somebody was carrying me to the back. And that's, uh, that's about all I remember um, going, you know, going forward in that night. There was also a little incident in in your house. You got uh, called to your house with an emergency, and he hit you from behind. Well, actually, uh, so uh, the 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 young man in that video is my nephew, uh, Aston's son, and ah. uh, I'm his emergency contact for everything. And I got a phone call from him saying there was an emergency at his house. So, of course, I sped across town. I probably ran four stoplights. Oh, um, I get in there and, I, you know, it was a setup. And the fact that Aston would use on my own nephew um, for something like that is just deplorable. Uh, and it will just add to what's coming to him. <laughs> Oh, I would love to see Aston show up Saturday. Um, just so everybody knows, Tristan will be at Gold for Gold tomorrow at EWF at Forest City National Guard Armory. Doors open 6.30, bell time 7.30, $5 at the door. Um, yeah, man, um, it, it, it was a really awful night. And then you got some revenge. Tell us a little bit about that. There's a video uh, yeah. out with you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, I know everything that he does. Uh, you know, we don't talk much these days, um, but I knew that he was on vacation and he must have forgot that I had keys to his house. Um, so I went over there and took a couple of things dear to him. Uh, now, <laughs> I did not steal his dogs, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> Uh, I don't want anybody. You, you to mentioned them in the video. I think that's why everybody uh, thought you did that. Yeah, no. You're like, where's I, uh, the I dog? Just, <laughs> yeah, no. I, uh, I I put them outside uh, because what, he's got one dog, uh, Carter, that uh, I I wouldn't want to mess with if you came over unannounced. So uh, yeah, I took some other things from him that uh, he'll get back. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think he thought it was the dogs, too, uh, but it's not. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that as well. I, I do hope he shows up tomorrow. I haven't I haven't heard from him in weeks other than the things he said on uh, on the Facebook. Uh, so, yeah, I hope he's there, too. <laughs> that that would definitely make my night, brother. Uh, ben Wright said, tell us about war games. <laughs> All right, so what he's talking about there, uh, a, a number of years back when we were all in our younger years, um, we were down at uh, another promotion there in South Carolina, uh, ran out of Spartanburg, and uh, it was me and Aston against uh, Timmy Anton and David Dukes. Uh, T well, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> We're having minor difficulties. I know, <laughs> okay. uh, a poster fell off the wall in my you house. Know, you, you know what it was? Look at here. This is what uh, it was. Yeah, there That's was a the disturbance reason. in the force. Yeah. Uh, Aston, so, Aston's already here. Aston's yawning. <laughs> so when you get because he's an old man and he probably just woke up for the day. Uh but back to Ben Wright's statement, because I ain't paying Aston no mind right now. Uh, it was also T.K. Stark and a gentleman named Jet Black, and then Ben Wright and his tag team partner Evan Force um, in a four-on or four-team elimination tag team championship match. Um, and uh, people may not know it, but Tristan Williams can wrestle. Um, I put Ben Wright through a ladder that night, and I don't mean like – Slammed him on a ladder, put him. I mean, we broke a ladder in half that night. Yeah, he said, um, "Tell him about the aluminum ladder." Yeah. Putting somebody <laughs> through an aluminum ladder—that is painful. 
<laughs> yeah, I uh, I set it between the ring and the guardrail, and I put him on top of it and took a leap off the top rope, and we uh, we broke an aluminum ladder that night. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't break Ben right in half. Holy I, cow. I, I thought we did, honestly. It took me about three weeks to recover from that match. Wow. <laughs> Oh, uh, your brother called you a goof. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't say what I'd like to say about him on here, to be honest oh, with sure you. sure you can. Hashtag truth is unscripted, <laughs> brother. <laughs> uh, hashtag not appropriate language for, you know, the listeners. Oh, okay. I got you. Thank you. Thank you for, for being that way. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty good guy, unlike my brother. <laughs> so... So you started off wrestling in Colorado, you said. When when uh, did yep. you when did you make the move to the Carolinas? Uh it was the end of 2012 and we started working for this promotion uh the one in Spartanburg like October of 2012. Okay. Um I uh I moved up here first. Um Aston wasn't too far behind during that time period. Um and I went up Aston, there. Aston's worked. always been a follower. Right. Uh, yeah, he's he's got some following complexes, that's for sure. Um, so I went up there and kind of like checked it out and see it, you know, looked to see if it was the promotion for us because that's important. Um, is you know making sure that we're you know we feel welcome where we're at and because um, when you're comfortable, you're you're successful. Right. Uh, so you know, I went and you know worked a couple of matches while he was moving his family up here, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and and it was. Hi, Connie. <laughs> um, my, I told you my family loves you, man. That's, that's awesome. I, I really am thankful for everybody. <laughs> so so you came to Carolina and you started off in EWF. Um, tell me a little bit about, um, you, you said you, you came up here to check it out. Who did you meet with? Who, do, who did you talk to? Um, was it was it just immediate man i'm gonna come wrestle for these guys or did you wait a little while uh so we like i said we started for that company in spartanburg we we worked for a company out in myrtle beach for a little while and then um some of the members at the at the headquarters there at ewf gave me a call um i had because i'd moved to new york for a little while took some time off from wrestling um and then when i was coming but when i moved back um, I, that's when I got the phone call that, uh, you know, they wanted to see what we got. And so I went up there, I met with, uh, a few of the officials in the home office and, um, I followed him to EWF. Okay. Um, and so, uh, they, they kind of liked what we had, you know, we had a couple of video packages and some things should, you know, display in our talents. Um, and so we, you know, we did a couple of things behind the scenes for him. And then, uh, you know, we made our debut and, uh, you know, started off like a rocket. You did, man. I, I remember it was it was totally awesome. Um, I loved your guys. I mean, I, I'm talking like you guys are nostalgia and it was 10 years ago. But, it, it you know, your guys is uh, theme music. You guys came out with a lot of spunk. It was awesome, man. Everybody loved CLB. Um my daughter's got three T-shirts from CLB. I don't know what she's going to do with them now, but. <laughs> uh, you know, don't don't give up on it yet. You know, it may not stand for the cocky little brats, but it may stand for something again one day. Okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe you can get maybe you can get something going, man, because I love it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the wife said hi. <laughs> see that. Hi, Connie. <laughs> ben Wright said. Tell tell us about the hockey fighting. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so Ben Wright's letting some old school, you know, stuff out here. Uh, <laughs> so we used to do a thing. Um, there was a couple of heels, the bad guys over at uh, this other promotion. And uh, one of our favorite things to do is when they weren't paying attention. You ever seen a hockey fight? You know, they throw off. Oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they throw the everything music. down and they get yeah, with it. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit like that, except for we like to take the shirt and pull it over the top of their heads so they can't see us <laughs> while we're giving them business. Uh, and, I, you know, Ben Wright and his tag team partner got it a few times 
over the years. The, the Rick the Rick Flair style of hockey fighting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just playing dirty, you know. Because we're not, that's you it. know, that's one thing about the cocky little brats, or you know, myself is that, you know, we're good guys. We'll play it right, but every now and again, you got to just get one in. My wife, my wife Connie said, "It's okay. Let Aston say what he wants. Tristan is coming for you." <laughs> uh, yeah, Aston says CLB means can't love my brother. Oh no! Yeah, I've uh, I've heard him use that a few times. Dexter Myers says Tristan broke the law, broke into his own brother's house, deserved what he got. Oh no! Is it? Is it really breaking in when you have the key? It's not breaking in, man. It's not breaking it's not in. Breaking, uh, I mean, I just entered a home that I had a key for. That's uh, it. Cops show up. You show them a key on your key ring. Yeah, hey, this is how I got and, in. And you show them your license that I'm prove that you're the brother. I mean, yeah, hey, you know. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying, Dexter. <laughs> I put one of your older pictures up uh, when I was advertising. Yeah, and Reagan said, "Tristan, you look older than you used to." Well, everybody I, grows I, I up, Reagan. I would, I would probably say that picture you posted is about six years old, and uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm no spring chicken these days. Dexter said you had that key made illegally. Dexter, you know a lot about this man. Are you are you stalking? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I'm not entirely sure how one has a key made illegally. Um, you know, I didn't use any fancy putty like a spy or anything. <laughs> Melanie said, Scott, take that hat off. I'll take the hat off right after the Super Bowl, after the Redskins win it. How you doing, Melanie? Y'all need to get back together and stop fighting. I don't think that's going to happen. The fight's going to happen first, if anything. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I don't see us getting back together. What he did was inexcusable, uh, and uh, you kind of don't do that to blood. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to make Dexter Myers is going to keep pushing this, brother. You steal a key, you take it to Walmart, you make one illegal. Uh, yeah, you got me. Such a terrible person. You know, throw the handcuffs on me. Let's go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that uh, before this fight, you probably house sat for your brother and other things when he was taking his vacations, and that's how you got the key, right? Yeah. Every year that man travels to Orlando with his family. I, I know when he's gone. I know when he wasn't home. I took the things I took. Uh, <laughs> my Redskins are going all the way, Melanie. Get over it. Aston Williams said jerk. <laughs> well, now we're slinging names. <laughs> yeah, you know, playing a different time to take vacation. Big, Big Mama, how you doing? Can't Hi, wait Lisa, to see everyone tomorrow. Hey, man, I can't wait. You know me. I'm going to be in there loud and proud. EWF I night, man. I hope everybody shows up, too, because I could really use uh, punching Aston in the face. <laughs> yeah, Aston, you need to show up tomorrow night. We're going to know what kind of man you are if you're not there tomorrow. Oh, trust me when I get on hashtag truth after that. Tristan, how long have you been wrestling, Reagan wants to know? Uh, just about 10 years now. Uh, like I said, we started in Colorado, or I started in Colorado back in 2009. Um like I said, the, the promotion was called Asylum Championship Wrestling, ACW. If you get on YouTube, you may be able to look at the first match I ever had, the first real match I ever had. Um, it was called uh, Looney's, uh, was the, the name of the building. It was a comedy club that we had uh, used for the building that night. So it's on YouTube, ACW, Looney's Comedy Show, Um I wrestled a gentleman that night. I was in. I was involved in a six man tag match nice. um, with, some, with some names. You know, Brandon Bishop. Uh, one of them, like I said, he's got a podcast himself on Spotify called Nine Mile Drive. In case anyone nice. wants to hear a little bit about my past. Um, but I also worked a guy that night. Uh, wrestled a gentleman named Rob Risen. I don't know if anybody's heard of ever heard of that name. He's down at NXT. Does a lot of stuff for uh, them uh, behind. No, I wouldn't say behind the scenes, but he's not like on the roster, but he does a lot of their, uh, he's worked Drew McIntyre. He's had a few good matches down there. Um, 
So I've been involved with a few, you know, a few people here and there over the years. Um, so we might be seeing a lot more of him too, because, um, not to take away from your interview or anything, but NXT is going to be making some changes now that AEW has announced that they're coming on TV. Apparently they're going to switch NXT over to FS1, or at least they're hoping they can do that to be on the same night. We're going to have a Wednesday night war this time instead of a Monday night war. And they're going to go to two hours instead of one. So there's going to be a lot more TV time for a lot more wrestlers. So, I'm putting that out there for all the indies wrestlers. They're adding another hour to WWE TV, and that means they're going to need more wrestlers. So be watching out. Do your best. And NXT and WWE is increasing their hours. So, Right. Uh, yeah. No, um, to kind of, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, making sure everybody knows how great indie wrestling is out there. We know James D. Drake just uh, – you know, he debuted on Evolve. Uh, I listen to a lot of good wrestling podcasts. I do a lot of driving these yeah, these days. Um, he was actually on Xbox uh, One Two Three Sixty. You know, Xbox got a. Um, so he talked about James D. Drake the other day on his podcast. I listen so to all these podcasts, man. Uh, Every one that you've mentioned, I, I listen to. I love listening to other podcasts because it, it makes me more professional and. The way they act, the way they ask questions, and and I have a really bad habit of interrupting folks, and I've got to get out of that habit. And listening to other podcasters, I'm slowly, mm-hmm. you know, scaling back on that. So <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's actually how I stay. You know, like I say, I'm a very busy man. You know that. It, we we've been trying to do this uh, this episode for a few months now, um, right? So, uh, um, but yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of good independent wrestling going on right now in the Carolinas and, um, I really hope everybody takes a chance to get out there and support their, you know, their indie show by, you know, especially, uh, this go to Saturday. your local yeah. shows, man. Yep. Go to your local shows, EWF this Saturday. There's a lot of others. I will be showing posters at the end of this. So there's a lot of good shows coming up in this area. Aston says, maybe I will be there. That was when we were talking about if he'll be there or not. I hope so. Um, Melanie wants to know, she came in late. She wants to know if you're going to be there tomorrow. I absolutely will be there. You know, bell times at seven, uh, doors open six thirty. Make sure you guys are there. $5 at the door. I'll probably be there early. Reagan wants to know if WWE offered you to come, would you come? Uh, in a heartbeat, uh, it wouldn't matter if it was five minutes every, you know, three weeks, I'd, I'd be there any chance. Would you drive to, cross uh, country for 15 minutes of TV time? I would, I would uh, not only for, uh, you know, for myself, but just the kind of the recognition you could bring, you know, cause even if you don't get picked up, you know, if they, if they're like, okay, these are the things you need to work on. You were still there. You got the experience right. you can bring back. Uh, you know, you can you share it in your seminars, all this other stuff, uh, in training. Um, a lot of, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize, but a lot of the superstar, well, not a lot, but there are some superstars that are on the main roster today that actually started out. The Hardys started out as jobbers on WWE TV. That's they were lo- They didn't win their first match for like a year and they were on mm-hmm. TV all the time, but they were losing. Absolutely. And then. Somebody looked up and said, hey, this Jeff kid can actually do some moves. Why don't we yep. start pushing them? And voila, we have the Hardy Boys, you know? Uh, same for John Moxley. Uh, right. A lot of those guys, um, you know, come in, they might do a dark match or they might do something here and there with them. Um, but, yeah, any any chance you get. Glenn said, hey. <laughs> Hello, Glenn. How are we? <laughs> he came in late to it it seems he wants to know if you guys are getting back together it almost sounds like a romance are you two guys getting back together no <laughs> no. no i don't see no. it happening anytime in the near future um but i'll let i'll let the brothers answer that question not anytime soon uh that's for certain we have uh we have some things we need to work out uh, and by work out i mean he needs to get beat up <laughs> as as they say in wwe we're gonna settle this in the ring <laughs> absolutely yeah uh, no uh between you know between turning on me that night and uh using his nephew or using my nephew his son to lure me into the home so that he could attack me 
Um, that's that's why I wasn't at the last EWF show. Um, I I can, I can barely walk after that. So, uh, Aston said, "Okay, you wasted enough of his time." Well, Aston, I tell you what, uh, there's always room for you here on hashtag Truth if you want to actually come and confront your brother. Now, let me know; I'll send you an invite. Uh, we could put you both on here at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I think he probably needs to go to bed. It is after five o'clock, so uh, you know. <laughs> take his, take his dose of Geritol, go to bed. <laughs> That's right. He's got to take his ginseng so he can remember who he is in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man! That is going to be awesome. So. If if you had a choice of what match you and your brother could have that you could have against your brother, uh, what would be the stipulation? If you could, if you personally could pick the stipulation, cool. Um, honestly, it would probably either be a cage match, just so I know he couldn't get away, or um, honestly, I'd like to put him out of this business forever. After what he did Loser to me, leave town. Uh oh. No, I don't even mean leave town. I mean <laughs> retirement. Loser, hang up their boots. <laughs> yeah, leave them in the ring. Oh my uh, god! I, I believe that I am willing to to put that up, and I, I I believe that I would like to retire him if I had if I got a chance. Lisa wants to know if you could go against any WWE athlete, who would it be? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, we'll we'll make it a lot simpler. We'll go by era. Um, if we're talking late eighties, early nineties, um, I would have liked a chance to work Diesel. I think we could have had a big, you know, a good, solid, big man, little man match. Um, I thought he was always one of the best, um, pure big men in the business. Um, going. You know, late 90s, early 2000s, I'd like to have gotten my hands on Shawn Michaels when he was, uh, you know, when he'd come back from that injury right there around 2004 when he got his confidence back in the ring. When he became Um, Mr. WrestleMania. (laughs) Yeah, right there. You know, after that SummerSlam 2002 match between him and Triple H, I think it was he hit his stride in the company, uh, and it was some of the best. Uh and then 2000s, I would probably say match with Jeff. I think Jeff Hardy would have been good at that time. Uh, and then now, I'd love to. I'd love to have a go at Seth Rollins. I think he's just a pure athlete all around. Yeah, Seth Rollins. Um, I looked it up. Seth Rollins last year and so far this year, four million dollars, folks. If you don't think the wrestling business is hot. He is worth four million dollars right now. Yeah, and that is um, from the last two years. So right, and now with AEW in effect, the yeah. money is only going to go up. So think yeah, about it's that. One of the best things about wrestling is competition breeds, you know, performance. Aston Williams told me I don't do things on your time; I do them on my time. Aston Williams says you want to be done. I'd gladly put that on the line if he'd show up Saturday night. <laughs> uh, hey, how you doing for the second time, Melanie? <laughs> hey. Have you ever met The Rock, Glenn Johnson wants to know? Uh, no, but in my travels over the years, I won't get into where I was when I met these people, but I have met um, The Big Show, Jericho, Orton, um, current WWE champion Kofi Kingston, uh, both the Bella Twins and Vince McMahon. Um, wow, that's big time. Okay, I, I, I'm going to be nosy and I'm going to ask, where did you see Vince McMahon? That 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 uh, name shocked me without, more than any of them. Without getting too far into my personal life, um, just because I, you know, business is business. But right, um, right. I, was in, uh, I was in Afghanistan. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, he, uh, he, okay. he, him and Kofi and the Bella Twins came over and uh, okay. just like spent an evening, um, you know, signing autographs and talking to us. Nice, man. That is awesome. Thank you for your service, by the way. Yeah, thanks. 
Because you want it so bad, maybe I will. Wow, man. EWF needs to listen up. We might have us a stipulation. <laughs> Would I'll sound good. That. Yeah. I'd, uh, that's right. Everybody needs to go flood Aston Williams' Facebook page and tell him he needs to be there Saturday. Yeah, Let's Melanie says, come, come on, show up, Aston. <laughs> and Melanie also says, thank you for your service. Thank you, Melanie. Um, <laughs> if y'all have any questions for Tristan Williams, put them up. Um, while we're waiting, I am going to go ahead and put the poster up right quick. Okay. EWF Go for Gold, July 27, 2019. Let me go straight through. Go for the gold will be at Forest City National Guard Armory, 890 Withrow Road. Doors open at 6.30, bell time $7.30, $5 at the door. Tristan Williams will be there. I'm going to put that out right away. EWF right. Tag Team Champs, Dapper and Dangerous, Myrick Moore and Derek Driver will be there. Good. The Fallout Boys, me, Dean Richards, and Oscar will be there. The Unbookables will be there. Big Country and Little City will be there. Brandon Owens will be there. There will be a mystery man, and no, I do not know who it is, so please do not ask. They are, EWF's keeping that very hush-hush. Uh, we're all going to be surprised. There's going to be one or two rock and roll surprises. I'm very interested in that. And the EWF heavyweight champion, Austin A. Game Jordan, will be in the house, and we are really, really hoping that Aston will show up to fight his brother Tristan. But, you know, we, we know how Aston is. We know, we know the coward that Aston can be. That's right. Okay, guys, Big Mama's got to go. Love y'all. See y'all. We will see you tomorrow night, Big Mama. No doubt about it. Melanie said bye also. <laughs> That's right. So who was your favorite wrestlers growing up? Who who did you idolize growing up um, watching um, wrestling, man? So, uh, if you can't tell from the way I work, um, obviously Shawn Michaels. I think that's why, uh, you know, I'd, I would have liked to have worked him, you know, in the past. Uh, I always thought he was just fluid. Um, you know, he never made a mistake. Uh, everything he did was cold, calculated. Um, there was a purpose to everything he did. Uh, and he was flashy, uh, confident. He, he had it, everything. You know what they say in the business, he had it. Uh, he could talk, he could fight. Um, but uh, also, uh, you know, I grew up watching Sting. I can remember the very first match that I ever watched on television. Um, it was Sting and Luger against the Steiner brothers. It was Monday night. Uh, heat or not was it or nitro yeah that's what it was nitro. called nitro. Yeah, I'm getting old these days um it's all it was good tag team title match and of course that's when i fell in love with tag team wrestling um you know and then it was a few years later that i uh stumbled across some wwf stuff and um that's when i fell in love with Shawn michaels and watching him and hunter do what they do so of course then i was like oh i want to do this with my brother uh, and then, of course, we finally got a chance to actually team up years down the road. Uh, and then, you know, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> here we are in the situation. I was about to say, when you were talking about Shawn Michaels, man, um, not to bring up, you know, what happened yeah. and, and all that and being on the bad side, but you kind of got the Marty Jannetty side of this one, didn't you? <laughs> uh, well, I guess we'll see how this all comes out. You know, I mean, I may have gotten the – the barber shop, so to speak, but I may be the one with the longer career after this. Oh, shot fired. I love it. I love it. So do me a favor in hashtag truth. Sometimes we ask the, uh, the uh, wrestlers to do a promo, cut us a promo right into that, right into your camera and, Give it right man. to your brother, man. Tell him how you feel. So, all right. So, Aston, uh, you know, I've been thinking about what I'd say to you if I got a chance, and I guess now my chance is uh, is here. 
Um, you know, over the course of the last few weeks, months, you've been talking about how you want people to follow you. And, and, you know, you made me follow you for years, so to speak. You wouldn't let me out of your shadow. Um, I've always been the more talented of the two of us. And I think that's always made you a little jealous. Um, and so we're going to get a chance. We're going to go and we're going to fight and it's going to be a fight. It's not going to be a match. It's not going to be wrestling. It's going to be a fight. Uh, and you think that you're going to beat me and you think that you have everything you have. Um, but in the words of the immortal Johnny Cash, whew, I've, been, I've been thinking about this for a while, um, but I'm going to let you down. I'm going to make you hurt. Oh, wow. I love it. Oh, I cannot wait. I hope Aston shows up tomorrow night. Man. Me Sonia too. wants to know, were you nervous during your very first time in the ring, and did it hook you right then? Mm. I got hooked into wrestling the moment I turned on the TV and saw it for the first time. <laughs> but uh, the first time I ever stepped foot into a ring, um, it was almost natural. It, it I felt like home. Um, but the first time I appeared in front of a crowd was very nervous. Uh nerve wracking. Uh, you know, I didn't know if I was any good. I didn't know, you know, was I clean, crisp? Did I know what I was doing? Was I going to screw it up? Um, but it turned out all right. Uh, like I said, that's, that's floating around somewhere on Facebook too. Um, <laughs> or know, not it, yeah, it might be on a Facebook, but it's on YouTube somewhere. Um, you know, it, isn't that amazing? Um, how it all changes when you when you get in the ring and actually do it and you hear the crowd. I've never had this happen, so I, I, I don't know the feeling, but I have played sports and, and I have like, you know, hit the game winning home run, so I know how that feels. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. compare it to that. Um you know it's just a different feeling. When you have people chanting the name of your tag team or people chanting your name or it, it's got to be a different feeling, man. When people walk up to you outside of wrestling, hey, Tristan, can I have your autograph, man? CLB rocks. You know, that, that, that's got to that's gotta give you a warm and fuzzy, man. So, uh, yeah, it it's really is like that. It's like being in the bottom of the ninth and bases are loaded and the count's full and you're about to, you know, throw the last pitch of the game. Um it's very much like that every single time. There's no, there's no like we have to get to that scenario. It's every time we step into the ring, it's like that, good or bad, like us or not. Um, you know, somebody's always chanting or cheering. I've never heard arenas so loud other than inside this business of ours. Um, you know, because I've, I've been to football games and baseball games where it's been dead. You know, it's quiet. You know, everybody's like, oh, we're just going through the motions. But wrestling is a whole different being um, because it's I mean, it's anything could happen. Literally, what's what's awesome about wrestling um, is people people pick their favorites right away. And when their favorites come through that curtain, they're whether they're a good guy or bad guy, they're ready to cheer. Or if it's a bad guy and they really hate them, they're ready to boo. They're ready to, you know. I've never been to a wrestling show where everybody sits on their hands and is quiet. And I don't think I know how to handle a wrestling show like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if I could, I could handle it either. I've heard that. uh, I heard that some of the Japanese wrestling is like that because they're more respectful, you know, like their culture is more respectful. So like they, they watch with the intent, kind of like watching a play or something. Um, So I heard it's a little difficult over there. Um, for that very reason, because I couldn't imagine, you know, pulling off a big move or a super kick and then it just being. All you hear is crickets, right? That, yeah. that oh, I, didn't, I wouldn't know what to do. Right. It would it be like, did I did I do something wrong? <laughs> did, did, did I, I miss? Not pull off the move? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Sonia said you do a great job and entertain the fans, and thank you very much. How many times have you actually gotten a thank you from fans, man? That is awesome. So- Sonia, thank you for doing that. Yeah, thank you very much, Sonia. Um, I, I'd like to believe that at least once a show, somebody always thanks us for what you know we do. And I, I'll tell you right now that there's a lot of gentlemen on that card and a lot of gentlemen on our side of the locker room that uh, 
you know, I, I enjoy and think every time I watch them, uh, you know, big country, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name drop, but, you know, big, I love watching <laughs> big country work. Um, you know, at Austin A game, I mean, he's fantastic. Brandon Owens is coming up. He's doing some great things. Uh, even some of the guys that I don't like, some of those bad guys, some of their, yeah. their it's, a, it's art. I, I'm I mean, going to name throw somebody that everybody seems to forget on the EWF roster, Eric Nuff. I love that guy, and he just oh, gets absolutely. better and better and better. Absolutely, he is enough. <laughs> <That>. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, uh, he's fantastic, too. Glenn said, okay, Aston, got to go. Make me proud. I, I know if he ever gets a hold of his brother, uh, Aston, he will make us proud. I, I'm pretty sure that will be the pop of the night. And and I know I'm going to be uh, – you'll, you'll hear me all the way back here in Chesney when, when he gets a hold of his brother, man, whether it's in a match or however it happens or when it happens because, you know, I, I'm not banking on Aston being there tomorrow night. I'm hoping he'll be there, but I'm not banking on it because, you know, he's a coward. Yeah, he's a uh, he's, uh, – yeah, he is a coward. <laughs> he, he waits till my back was turned. Uh you know, he's, he's obviously suckered me in a few times now. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'd call him a coward. My wife said you two need to have a backyard brawl. Just every anything goes backyard brawl. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. No, I don't, I don't know. I got some, got some bruises and broken bones over the years. I don't know if I could. Glenn said, I met it. Tristan. <laughs> Wait, I, I – I actually met Tristan a few times. As a matter of fact, I forgot to load it, but the night that they, the, the most recent time they won the EWF Tag Team Championships, I've got a picture with you and your brother. You guys draped the belts over over me and took a picture with me. And uh, I would have I would have brought it and loaded it and put it up there, but I don't want to bring back any bad memories, uh, especially with you being mad. <laughs> so. Uh- no, it's all right. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's like anything else. Uh, it, you know, it was an empire. You know, we, we ran the Carolinas for a number of years, and we, you know, um, I mean, it'll be in the history books. I'm I'm sad that it's gone the way it is, and I plan to end it my way. Um, and, you know, we'll just add a little blurb at the end of it about how Aston retired from professional wrestling. And, uh <laughs> You know, I love it. Go. Um, but uh, I mean, the memories are still there. I mean, the tag team titles have been won. You know, we've won tag team titles everywhere we've gone. Now it now it's on to the single titles, correct? That's absolutely correct. I hope that uh, EWF takes notice of the things that I do to Aston Williams, and not just the business. You know, the aspect. I hope the hope the guys understand that. Uh, you know, I love this business and it's, it's, it's about me now. Um, I'm, I'm going to do what I can to prove and show people that I deserve to be a top tier name in this, in this company. Um, you know, so, I mean, that puts everybody on alert. Uh, you know, oh, even, man, even there's gonna, I've friend. got matches running through my head, brother, man, you against all the unbookables, you against, you know, a game Austin Jordan for the belt. You against Kodiak PJ Ellis for his belt, man. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you pick up a, 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 dare I say, better tag team partner along the way, and yeah. hit up Damper, Dapper and Dangerous for their EWF tag team belts, man. Yeah, I, st- I still owe them a whooping um, for you know for beating us. Um, but yeah, no, I mean everybody's on alert. I mean. I don't care if I have to start at the bottom. Uh, I'll prove that I'm here for the long haul, and this is what EWF needs. Uh, no doubt about it. Brother, you are welcome back on Hashtag Truth anytime. I mean, <laughs> I know you got a really busy schedule, and that's yeah. why I did this Hashtag Truth Extra. And I I, like you said, I've been trying to get you on here for months. So if people are wondering why I'm going off my Sunday and Thursday schedule to have Tristan on, that is exactly why this man is hard to get. And when he called me up and said, hey, 
I can do it at this time. I jumped at it. I was like, man, anytime you tell me, I want you on here. I want you to tell everyone about what's going on with you and your brother. And now we know, we know both sides of the story. Show up tomorrow night at EWF at the Forest City National Guard Armory. Doors open at 6.30, bell time 7.30. We just might have a brother-on-brother fight, man. It could happen. You're right. Um, I, I do. I want to say thanks for having me on here. I appreciate you working around your schedule for me. Um, but, you know, what better way to close out the week before a big show than having the best there is on? Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Shots um, fired up the EWF roster right there, bro. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm pretty sure some champions will have something to say. <laughs> uh, you know, they they know where I'll be tomorrow, and it just so happens to be titled Go for the Gold. Uh, so let's see what happens. Um, but, yeah, I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow night, EWF, Four City Armory, 7 o'clock. Uh, I'll be there. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Scott. I just want to say thanks for everybody that watched, commented, concerned, uh, and let's do this again sometime soon. No doubt about it, brother. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions, I am going to wish Tristan a very good night, brother. Uh, sleep well, and hopefully tomorrow you will get your hands on your brother, man. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll see you there. All right. Oh, man.